So there you have it. No CLI. The only really dodgy thing I had to do was install the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. Nouveau, the driver that Ubuntu ships with, is, well, the performance is not great. So it was just point and click to install that. No CLI. Click activities, type Steam, install the Steam installer, log into Steam, download games. Up and running, it's pretty easy, right? Well, if you're just joining us or just finding this video, let me explain. I recently did a collaboration with Linus Tech Tips, where we showed off, basically, the four options for gaming on Linux. We briefly talked about native Linux gaming, which Linus has shown before on his channel, so we didn't think his audience was super interested in that. Then we demonstrated Wine and DXVK. Those are technologies that approximate the Windows API to hopefully let you run Windows games under Linux. And DXVK is doing some really awesome stuff, like translating the Windows DirectX API to the more Linux-friendly Vulkan API for graphics. Then we demonstrated running a full fat Windows virtual machine on Linux to enable, you know, that gaming experience. You know, launch day Windows titles will run just fine on those virtual machines the way that we set it up there. And then finally, we demonstrated Looking Glass. Looking Glass is a cool piece of software that lets you real time get graphics from that virtual machine to the host. So you can run your games in a window or whatever you want to do on your host. This video is more in-depth talk about the native gaming on Linux thing, at least as of Q3 2018, and how far we've come in short order for gaming on Linux since Steam Machines, basically. Sure, we're up and running the first 30 seconds of this video, but let's take a closer look at what we did, step by step. All right, so here's the full hardware rundown for this system. We're running the Asus Crosshair Hero 7, the GeForce GTX 1080. This is the Strix version of the GTX 1080. Right now I've got 16 gigabytes of 2933 error correcting memory, which of course has its own video. I've got a Toshiba RD400 NVMe in here, which is pretty awesome. It's really fast. And this is all of course in the Fractal Meshify C. It's a micro ATX case. Now this one's the cheap one. There's no glass side panel. It's just a metal side panel. But hey, it's on sale at Newegg. It's a pretty swanky case. I like it. I've also got the Seasonic power supply. Now I've got a crazy overkill 850 watt Seasonic power supply in here right now. But that's so I can run multiple graphics cards and multiple super power hungry graphics cards like that Vega Sapphire 64 Nitro Plus Edition, which is the nicest Vega 64 card you can get, pretty much. For CPU cooling, we've also got the massive overkill Celsius S24, but if you're gonna build a uh, Ryzen system, I'm just gonna go ahead and recommend you use the box cooler. Whatever box cooler the Ryzen CPU comes with, just use it. You don't really need an aftermarket CPU cooler. First up, we install Ubuntu. I'm assuming you don't need to know, you know, anything extra for how to do that, so we just install Ubuntu. Next, I recommend you update the binary driver for the best gaming experience. Do you have an NVIDIA graphics card or an AMD graphics card? If you have an Intel GPU, I'm, I'm so sorry. Now, what if your team red? We need to talk about that for a minute or two. So if you aren't team red, I guess you could skip ahead a minute or two because this maybe doesn't really matter. All right, all right. The scoop here is that AMD is supporting Linux in a big way these days. For AMD, gone are the days of the proprietary black box driver, like the NVIDIA driver. If you have an RX 460 or newer card, eh, maybe, but not as new as Vega, you might be okay skipping this step. Try some games and see how performance is before you do this. But I'm adventurous and I'm not afraid of my computer. So AMD has very recently made substantial improvements and they're open source drivers. It's honestly very, very exciting. I really get excited talking about this. The newer drivers come with the newer Linux kernels. And that kernel version that came out that has all the cool stuff, it's a little too new to be included with Ubuntu 18.04. So we're gonna go off script here a little bit and use the Ubuntu kernel update utility to get a newer Linux kernel that has the newer, cool, open source AMD drivers. This probably won't even be necessary with a newer version of Ubuntu, uh, but, you know, the newer version really does make those AMD GPUs sing. And it's just a couple of clicks. Now, this is not officially sanctioned by Ubuntu. You should understand that. And if we get into trouble, well, you know, the Ubuntu people don't want to help you, but you can come to the level one forums and we'll try to help you. Now, let me tell you, there are armchair experts out there that will tell you that you don't have to upgrade the Linux kernel for AMD GPU. And this is like, my experience is that that's not true, but that's not good enough for me to just say that. So here's the full Monty on that. The Strix Fury, that might be true. Strix Fury and older cards, you might be able to get away with not upgrading the kernel. But subjectively, my experience with the newer kernel was so much better 
that I'm gonna recommend that you update the kernel. Vega, with Vega 64, the Sapphire card's really nice. With Vega 64 on Linux, kernel 4.15, the stock Ubuntu kernel, I would get, like, the screen would cut out sometimes, games would just inexplicably close, and then I would check the, like, the messages, and it seemed like it was a seg fault, or sometimes I had some kernel panics, and you know what? I really didn't spend a lot of time troubleshooting those, but when I upgraded to a new, newer kernel, those problems went away. So, I, you know, do you, I mean, subjectively, my experience is that by the time that I got to kernel 4.17, the AMD GPU drivers were a lot better than they were in 4.15. And that's true whether you're running Vega or the Fury. Both of these cards are the cards that I have the most experience with running on the Linux kernel. And so that is why I recommend updating the kernel because 4.15 was not a great experience for me, especially with a Vega graphics card. Oh. And I'll give you NVIDIA folks a hint too. You can try slightly newer NVIDIA drivers if you're willing to do uh, sort of a brave command line thing, kind of like the AMD guys, not by updating the kernel, but by adding a PPA for more up-to-date things. You'll have to mess with the command line and you know look at the guide on level one if you want to do that for slightly newer NVIDIA drivers, but probably don't need that. For this video, I'm just showing you what you can do pretty much without touching the command line. And you really can do a lot. I mean, there are over 5,000 games for Steam on Linux. And there's also good old games, which provides a huge number of games for Linux as well. These are DRM free, they're good. I mean, good old games is doing really awesome work. And Linux, honestly, is pretty great for productivity, work tasks, and doing stuff on the internet. It's a pretty solid desktop experience overall these days. Not just Ubuntu. I'm talking about Fedora and Arch, you know, for more experienced Linux users and other distros that are worth mentioning, you know, Elementary, Solus, Mint, there are a lot of really awesome Linux distros out there that offer a tailored UI experience. And, you know, the tide of Linux is rising, and a rising tide lifts all boats. So, if you compare the top games being played on Linux to the top games being played on Windows, those lists are quite different. There are some similar games, but there are some different games. So there's a lot of games that remain unavailable for Linux. But, on Linux we've got Tomb Raider and CSGO and Deus Ex and Dota 2 and more natively on Linux. And that's pretty great, and Rocket League is awesome. Did I mention that I love Stellaris? The performance on Linux is better than ever, but it can still be inconsistent. Bioshock Infinite, a title from five years ago, has performance near parity with Windows. CSGO, Portal, and other Valve games are typically really well supported on Linux too, and often those have great performance. Generally, the performance is a bit lower than the same hardware on Windows, but we're getting there, we're getting there on Linux. Now, there are lingering rough edges on Linux too, of course. Like, for example, Civ 6. I love Civ, but the Civ 6 experience on Linux really isn't great. The performance is pretty terrible, and there are a lot of UX glitches, at least compared to the Windows performance for me. So, you know, multiplayer games between Linux and Windows still unsupported. Witcher 3 still hasn't been ported to Linux, and this is probably because of the toxic and immature community action and comments and stuff around the Witcher 2 port. So, I want to shore up the performance difference between the two platforms. But to do that, we need better diagnostic tools. So if you're a developer or an aspiring developer and you want to help out, I want you. I've got just the thing. We need a good Linux set of tools for measuring and benchmarking performance, frame times, and you know stuff like that from various games and various APIs. We need something like OCAT or FCAT or FRAPS. But it's oh, there's some stuff like that for Linux, but it's hit and miss and those projects are mostly suffering from bit rot. And more bad news, they've got to be easy enough for YouTubers to use to run benchmarks. Ooh, burn, yeah. Maybe that could be another project that the level one community leads. Let's work on that in the forum. Now, Linux is a great operating system, but it isn't Windows, and you should not expect the Windows experience on Linux. If you wanna do this, there's a full guide on the level one forums and you can follow along. Just you know, welcome new users from the Linus Tech Tips collab. The next video in this series is gonna be setting up and running Wine and DXVK and Lutris and all that, just like we showed in the Linus Tech Tips video. But I did want to spend some time showing the performance of you know native Linux gaming and the types of things that are available. It's honestly very good. It's definitely much better than it was when Steam Machines launched. Could it be better still? Yes, absolutely. 
But if we continue on with the momentum that we have been natively gaming on Linux, I think the future is going to be really bright. But with technologies like Wine and DXVK and that kind of thing, we don't necessarily have to wait on game studios to support gaming on Linux. We can do it, do it without them. And eventually the hardware will catch up. Eventually technologies like SRIOV will make it to where that you can have one graphics card that's shared between you know, a host and a guest operating system. We're not there yet, but huh, me and the people that sort of see it the way that I do, I think are paving the way for that future to come about. So I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.